Hello and welcome to Just One More Watch. Welcome today to something a little bit different. This is a first for me, I haven't reviewed this brand before. Indeed, I don't think this brand gets a lot of love or attention from all of us wisses here on YouTube. And yet the design of the watch that I'm gonna show you today, which is the same design as across all of the range, is surely one of the most iconic and identifiable designs anywhere in the world of horology. It's mundane. Now, you saw the pop-up. This video is sponsored by Mondain. They sent me this watch for free. I do not have to send it back. Now, they gave me the pick of the range and I picked one of their more expensive automatics. I mean, you would, wouldn't you? If you like the look, but you don't necessarily have the budget, you don't have to spend that much to get pretty much the same design. Their quartz models start from around 300 US dollars. However, I have one specific buying recommendation with this one. Make sure you stick around for that. Let's flip the camera and find out what it is. So I think a little potted history is in order today while I take this watch out of its box, just to contextualize the design so that you understand where this one came from. It came from the Swiss Railways. They have been using this design essentially as their Swiss Railway clocks at all of their stations since the mid 1940s. It was designed by a gentleman called Hans Hilficker. He updated it in the 1950s to include the now iconic red paddle second hand. Apparently that was because the conductors on the platforms used a very similarly shaped paddle to communicate to the train drivers. Mondain, the watch brand, bought the rights to use that design to sell them as watches and wall clocks. The wall clocks are also pretty funky in the mid 1980s and they have been selling quite a few of them since then. And no wonder, just look at that thing. I reckon our grandchildren children's grandchildren will be talking about this design in a couple of hundred years time as iconic. It really is a classic. So a classic set of dimensions then to go with those classic looks, 40 millimeters in diameter, 20 millimeter lug width. You can't go too far wrong with a 40, 20, 12 millimeters thick and just under 45 lug to lug. I measure it at about 44 and a half. That means it's going to wear very, very nicely, even on smaller wrists. I'll show you on mine later on. On this supplied leather strap, which is a good one, by the way, mundane branded, genuine leather, and with a nice high polished mundane branded buckle and tang. This one weighs in at 62 grams. So a super light watch if you are going to wear it as an everyday piece. You know, I will talk about the movement and I'll show you the various other elements of the watch in due course, but really this one lives or dies on that dial design. That's really where the interest is today and it is so iconic and so incredibly legible. If you've got a railway clock, if you've got a, a clock that may be elevated and at some distance, then you want it to be as legible as possible and that design carries over in the watches and no mistake, and it is just beautiful. Stark black on white with that little pop of color from the paddle second hand. Now, Mundane printed with SBB, CFF, FFS. Those are the initials, the acronym of the Swiss Railway Company in French, Italian, and German, the three languages that are commonly spoken in Switzerland. Automatic printed above the index at six and Swiss made either side. And that day date complication nicely integrated. They have done that without truncating the baton index, the applied baton on index at the three o'clock. So applied black batons all the way around, all equidistant. The whole thing has such a beautiful symmetry, beautiful legibility, very, very simple, very, very handsome, incredibly legible and utterly iconic. And that's it on wrist. I think it looks fantastic on wrist as well. Incredibly, incredibly legible. One of the most legible watches that I have ever reviewed on the channel. And I have reviewed the Rolex Submariner, various Seamasters, and a number of other iconic dive watches. Fits me really nicely. I've got a seven inch wrist for your reference. Less than 45 lug to lug. They do a smaller version though. They do a 36. So if you have, I would say smaller than about six and a quarter, I reckon this 40 is gonna be no problem for people with smaller wrists. Or if you just prefer a big watch and don't mind a bit of overhang, then go for the 40. They do have a 36 though, as mentioned. Black leather strap is pretty comfortable. I'll show you on the mesh as well though. And that's it on the mesh. As mentioned, I bought that as an add-on from Mondain Australia. So it has the official Mondain logo on the fold over there. I think the mesh goes with it. It suits that high polish finish to the case. I wouldn't get too crazy with straps with this one though. I think the dial design is so clean you don't really want to outdo the dial by putting too much color or too much pattern or too much texture on the strap. I'd be keeping it pretty simple if I was you. And back on the leather for the overhead shot. This one has hardened mineral crystal. You can get sapphire. It's about an extra hundred Aussie dollars. I'll talk about the price in a minute or two. 
I don't think the mineral necessarily does it any favors on camera, though let me assure you, human eye, no problems at all with legibility here. And similarly, outside, there's a little bit of kind of ghosting, a little bit of milkiness that you get from that mineral crystal on camera. I assure you, there is none of that when you're looking at the watch with your eyeballs. On wrist, vintage style, downturn lugs, short lug to lug of less than 45. It wears very, very nicely. And that leather strap is pretty comfortable. And definitely no complaints from me about the choice of movement. Solita SW220-1 is the day-date version of the SW200, which is a clone of the ETA 2824. So it's 26 dual hacking and hand-winding high beat, 4 hertz automatic with a roughly 40-hour power reserve. Let's pop this one in the time grapher, have a little look-see how it gets on. Yeah, that'll do, running at minus four seconds per day, just within the bottom end of the COSC parameters. Not that this one is COSC certified, you'd pay a lot more money for that. Reasonable amplitude, not much of a beat error, and advertising that 28,800 vibrations per hour high beat rate. So classic looks, a great backstory, extreme legibility, and an excellent Swiss automatic movement with the added practicality of a day and date complication on the dial. Do you love it? Do you want one? All right, you better stop the video here then, because it does go a little bit downhill from this point onwards. The case finish is okay if unspectacular. High polish throughout, again, pretty simple, but not necessarily anything different that I've seen for around 200 US dollars. And this watch, I believe, has a list price of about 1,000 US dollars. Nice crown though, you can see little M logo and filled with red to match the lollipop second hand and the text on the dial. However, the crown is almost impossibly small and slippery. It is really, really difficult to hand wind this. It's a kind of frustrating experience as well. I have found myself giving it a good old shake to start it rather than using the hand wind function. And perhaps you spotted it earlier on, that is a press on case back giving this watch only 30 meters of water resistance. It just says water resistant there. I cannot remember the last time I reviewed a watch that didn't have at least 50 meters of water resistance. Now, let's not get confused here. 30 meters does not mean to say you can swim to depths of 29 and a half meters. It means the watch is okay for washing your hands if you get caught in a rain shower or washing the car, but you ain't swimming with this one, meaning it lessens its appeal as an everyday watch to me if you have to be guarded around water in a way that you wouldn't if it was a little better made than it currently is. And why have a display case back and then put a big ugly graphic across the middle of it? I don't get that either. And then there is the price and the one specific buying direction that I alluded to in the intro. This watch was sent to me by Mondane and that is the link you will find in the description of the video. The Australian list price for this specific model, including 30 meters of water resistance and a hardened mineral crystal is $1,299. I think that is asking a little bit too much of the customer. I cannot hand on heart recommend it to you at that price. A quick Google search revealed a local online jeweler retailing this one for just over 1,050 Aussie dollars, which is more reasonable. And indeed you can probably get it to that price if you sign up for the Monday newsletter and wait for a 25% off sale. However, amazon.com.au have it for $730. That, I think, is a much more realistic price for this one. As much as that dial design is beautiful, it is classic, it is iconic, it is also a little bit overpriced, I feel, at the standard RRP. eBay.com, if you're buying in American dollars, 560, I reckon that's a reasonable price to pay. I would not be paying list for this one. So my recommendation is shop around for the best price on this one. It is such a gorgeous design. And if you're okay with a couple of the inherent shortcomings of the watch, like the fairly basic case, the unusable crown, and 30 meters of water resistance, it's still a beautiful watch on wrist but it's a far more beautiful watch at 40 to 45% off than it is at list price. So there you have it, the Mondane Railway watch. I was not exaggerating with the thumbnail today. I genuinely think this is a classic design and one that our great, 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 great grandchildren will be heralding as such in a couple of hundred years time. It is that iconic. If you're okay with quartz, if you don't mind that, then there are plenty of them that have the same design around the $300 mark. But if you want to go for one of the top of the range Swiss autos, I recommend getting it on as big a discount as you possibly can. Thank you for watching. I will see you in a future video.